Now your resting pulse rate can give you some idea on how long you actually have to live. Now there are other better indicators that will predict mortality, like the coronary artery calcification test. If you haven't seen that video, I put a link down below. But your resting pulse rate can give you some good information to predict your mortality to a certain degree. And I'm not just talking about cardiovascular deaths, I'm talking about deaths from all causes. So based on a meta-analysis, which I'll put the data down below, uh, mortality increased by 9% for every 10 beats per minute of resting heart rate. Now, what does that actually mean? It means that if your pulse rate is low, let's say it's 45 beats per minute, you have a low risk of dying. And if your pulse rate is higher, let's say it's 90 beats per minute, you have a significantly higher risk of dying from something. So the goal is to uh, monitor your resting pulse rate just to kind of give you an idea where you're at and also to do things to, to bring it down. Uh, Well-trained athletes have very low pulse rates. I'm talking like uh, 40, 45, 50, that's all really, really low. And of course, people with cardiovascular disease, coronary artery disease, arrhythmias, high blood pressure, typically have a higher resting pulse rate, which puts them more at risk. Now, I do want to make a note here. If you are on a medication that is bringing your pulse rate down, that's not what you want to go by. You want to go by a resting heart rate without any help doing any manipulation of your heart rate. That'll give you the true number. Another study I want to make note um, found that postmenopausal women with a pulse rate of 76 beats per minute, if you compare that to women with lower pulse rate, had a 26% increased risk of heart attacks, okay? So anyway, it's, it's one indicator. It's not the whole picture, but it's something to look at. And it's a very cheap test to do because you just basically need to measure your pulse. You can even use your two fingers and look at your watch and see how many beats within one minute it comes out to. So what controls your pulse rate? something called the vagal tone. Uh, the vagus nerve, which is a very long nerve, and it comes out of your brain stem, and it goes into a lot of different organs, but it goes right to the heart as well, and the blood vessels of the heart, and the things that control the rhythm of the heart. And so this vagus nerve is under the parasympathetic control. Parasympathetic has to do with rest and digest. It's an active type wave in the body that pushes things down and helps recover things. For example, let's say you exercise really, really hard for a minute, okay? And you checked your pulse rate before, and then right at the end of the exercise, so it's gonna be high, and then you kept checking your pulse rate after a minute, and then two minutes and three minutes. The faster that pulse rate comes down, the faster the recovery, the stronger the vagal tone or vagus nerve or parasympathetic nervous system that is pushing that wave down. And the same thing in a resting state, your parasympathetic nervous system is supposed to keep your pulse rate nice and low, and that is your recovery system. So there are various things that you can do to strengthen your vagal tone or your parasympathetics. Number one, exercise. Consistent, regular exercise with a catch. And the catch is this, you must be able to recover because if you overtrain, you're going to end up with a lower recovery. So you need to make sure that you don't overtrain. Next thing is sleep. Yeah, sleep. Recently, I've been doing an experiment with my body um, by just sleeping more. I'm sleeping like nine hours, and I'm liking it a lot. I've been sleeping for six hours for years, you know, with this idea that I don't need much sleep. I can just take a nap. But then I compared it to sleeping longer. I mean, nine hours is excessive. I'll probably end up going to eight hours, but wow, do I feel better with nine hours of sleep. Incredible. And I have more mental cognitive function. I'm in a better mood. So you might want to actually try that one too. But more sleep is going to help your recovery, especially of the heart. All right, the next one, and this might be a big shocker for most of you, fasting. Okay, it's not a big shocker. All right, next one is low carb. Okay, when you combine a low carb diet with fasting, you strengthen the parasympathetic. You take someone out of the sympathetic flight or fight mode and put them more into a calming recovery state. And by the way, when you're on a low carb, you're eating less sugar. When you eat refined sugar, that depletes you of the next two things 
which have to do with keeping your pulse rate in check. And that would be having enough potassium. A potassium deficiency okay, can cause your pulse rate to go higher. And one cause of a potassium deficiency is consuming a lot of refined sugar and refined grains. Okay, so potassium is a real key mineral to help push down that pulse rate. So that means getting enough potassium from your diet, whether it's from a supplement or a lot of salad. Vitamin B1 is the next thing. And uh, if you don't have enough B1, your pulse rate can go up. And it just so happens when you eat refined sugar, that will deplete you of B1. People that do more carbohydrates require more B1. Diabetics with higher blood sugar require a lot more B1 or they get a lot more damage to the eyes, the kidneys, the heart, and the brain. Vitamin D is a great thing to help lower your pulse rate and your blood pressure. If you just had a vitamin D deficiency, that could be the reason why your pulse rate is high and the reason why your blood pressure is high too. And of course, the last thing is keeping your stress as low as possible. Easier said than done, but I wanted to bring that up. So anyway, I just wanted to give you some data on your resting pulse rate and uh, definitely monitor it and do things to uh, keep it on the low side. Hey, before you go, if you're benefiting from any of my content, I would love to hear about your success story. Please share it in the link down below.